Just before we get into this video, if this video does help you, be sure to smash the like button, smash the subscribe button, and if there's anything I can help you with, or if you need assistance, let me know in the comments, or just simply contact me on social media. Here we are in VS DC Video Editor, and this is what it's going to look like when you first open it. Now bear in mind, the version I've got is the free version, and you will see the free version is simply amazing with what you actually get. There's a lot of free video editors out there that say it's free, however once you actually get into the video editor, it may say you can only export in a certain file format, for example no higher than 720p, or there may be another stipulation where it says you cannot edit videos longer than 10 minutes. And it's happened quite a lot, but this one is completely different and it's a really, really good free video editor. Of course, there is a paid version to this and the cost of that is very affordable. However, I'm going to be showing you the free version and what you can actually use on the free version. So as I mentioned, once you open it up, this is how it will look. And as you can see, get to know the top features. There's a bunch of features right here that you're able to use. So just quickly run through the main ones. We've got the video effects, of course, adding filters, making it transparent, adding transformation effects, and of course, transitions. You've then also got the ability to export up to 4K, which is amazing. Then you've got the blending modes. You've got the masking tool, of course, is where you can make shapes. This is where you can blur certain objects. You've got chroma key for green screens. You got waveform, of course this is mainly for people who edit their audio if you're going to be using it in the editing software itself. 3D Pro Charts, which is pretty cool, it's not something every video editor has. You've then got the option for a multimedia combiner, which means you can convert multiple formats and extra apps for your creative work. Video Manager, DVD Burner and a Screen Recorder all built into this software, which again is rare that a video editor will have this in. From the top of my head, I know Camtasia do offer this. However, the price of that is, is a lot more expensive than this software. Then of course, you've got the 360 and 3D editor. You've got motion tracking. And then finally, one called Edit the Beat. Simply syncing any elements of your video from the text to effects to the beat of your audio, which is really, really cool. So I've already went over it, but you can record your screen from here. As you can see, you've got video capture. So this can be a webcam or if you connect your DSLR to the laptop or your computer, you can do it directly from here. Then of course, importing, creating a slideshow and a blank project. Now, if you're going to be video editing, you're most likely going to be selecting the blank project. So I'm just going to select that. Now, once you open this, this is where you're going to be creating the project. So you can just call this whatever you want to. I'll call this example. You can fill in the metadata if necessary. I usually just leave it out. And then just below here, we can choose the resolution. As I mentioned, it can go all the way up to 4K. For me personally, I go 1920 by 1080. And for the frame rate, I would have that at 60 FPS. However, you can see it goes all the way up to 120. So for those with GoPros or iPhones, of course, they have a high frame rate you can use for really cool slow motion effects or just sports in general. So as mentioned, I'm going 60 FPS and from here, all I'm going to be doing is selecting finish. Now, this is the user interface. This is where people get put off, but I can assure you it's very, very simple the way they've laid it out. Now, when you first open it, it's actually got a mix of Premiere Pro, After Effects, and then also Movie Maker for those that remember Movie Maker. So at the top here, you've got different editing styles, which are more like filters. Again, this was in Movie Maker, so it's pretty cool to see it here as well. We've got the timeline at the bottom and over to the side on the right, we've got the effects and also different uh, details of what would be on your timeline. Now for importing video clips or even images, you can simply drag and drop them on. Now, once you drag and drop it on, as you can see, it's going to load up onto your screen and onto your timeline. So this is it right here. Now I'm going to bring up a disadvantage here, not to be too negative, but I'm going to be critical about the software. As you can see on the timeline, we can't actually pick where we want to go. For example, I want to move the cursor over here. We can't actually click there. We need to come to the cursor and we need to drag it across, or you just need to click on the cursor timeline. It's being picky. However, I know other softwares which do just simply allow you to click anywhere on the timeline and the cursor will follow. Now to enlarge what's on your timeline, you simply come to the bottom or the top of it and you can see you can enlarge them and you've got different thumbnails here on your video. 
Now bear in mind, remember we picked the project to be at 1080p. Over here to the left, it just shows you 720p. This is just the preview quality, so don't be put off with whatever this says. If, for example, when you play it back, I'll just play mine back here. If it is lagging for you, all you'll need to do is simply turn the quality down. Again, don't be put off. The quality will be a bit more poor on the preview screen. However, once you export it, it will be in full HD. Now, a cool thing about this, if you hover over the video, you can see all the details come up of the video itself. Now, the main thing which people would probably need to know is the resolution and the frame rate. So you can see it tells me all of that right there. Now, let's say anywhere on your video, you would like to create a cut or you would like to separate the videos for whatever reason. So just go across in your timeline. Once you find a spot that you want to split, all you need to do, head over there, head over to the editor at the top and simply select the split into parts button here. And just like that, we've now got two separate parts. So we've got this one and of course we have this one here, just like that. Super simple. Now, of course, now you've got two clips, you may want them on separate tracks. So at the moment, we've just got one track, which is called layer one. We can simply select one of the clips, which I'll select the one on the right. I'm going to left click and drag this down. And this has now been split onto two separate tracks. So as you can see, we've got layer one, we've got layer two, and they're on two separate tracks, just like that. Now, a couple of more basic features we have over to the side here next to the video preview screen. Of course, we've got the move tool. We've got the add a sprite, which is creating an object added to the editor. We've then also got the adding a duplicate or creating a duplicate. For example, I'll click on this video here. I'll select duplicate. As you can see, we then get this up and this chooses where you actually want the duplicate to happen, which is pretty cool because again, many features in softwares don't even have this again in paid ones as well. And over to the side, you can even get add it to a new layer. So I'm going to do that and I'm going to select OK. Over to the side, you've then got add duplicate, create duplicate object and add it to the editor. Super simple. You then got some shapes here. So you can add a line, you can add a rectangle, you can add an ellipse. And then you've also got the custom shape, shapes here. So you just left click that. And as you can see, you can choose wherever you want to select OK. And then at the top here, you can see it says free shape. This is where you can choose how you want it to look. And then of course, just draw out whatever you want to right here. Continuing on, we then got the type tool or the text tool. So you can left click it, you can select text. Again, you get all of this here. I'm going to select OK. And I'm going to left click and draw this out. And I'm just going to call this example. Press Control A. At the top here, we get complete control of the text on how we want it to look. So everything is literally right in front of you. And I'm just going to pick a font here just because it's simple, I'm going to leave it like this. Now with text along the top here, you got different aligning. So you can align to the left, the middle or the right. And then if you have more than one line of text, you can, can align it to the top, to the, the center or the bottom. So this, of course, we've got a gap here. So if I align it to the center, as you can see, it's going to go to the center and the center just like that. Again, there is more text options over here. So you've got the brush color, for example, and also the contour color. Again, you can just pick. There are loads of different ones to pick from. We've then got the chart feature, which I mentioned at the beginning. You can create an animation or add an animation, and then you can simply import your images, import your music, or import your video directly from using these three buttons here. But again, you can simply drag and drop them in. And of course, I'm just going to show you adding in the audio here. Just going to simply add on this right here. And again, you get all these options. I'm going to select OK. It's on a new track here and you do get different sound effects. So once you click on it again at the top where it says editor, you then have the ability for audio effects right here. You can change how it actually sounds again. Pretty cool and very, very simple to edit and a very simple way to simply trim your audio or even your videos. You just come to the end or you come to the beginning, as you can see, like this, and it simply trims them out. So it's that simple using the trimming tool. And then just to show you a bit of the video effects, so I'm going to select the video here, which is on layer one. And all I'm going to be doing is coming over to the top again on the editor tab. And as you can see, we can add some video effects here. So we got some cool little adjustments and then we've got some transitions we can use as well.
Now the filters, again, just choosing a quick style. It's pretty cool. You've got all of this stuff here. They may not look the best. However, it is just a nice feature to add on. So you can see this is now a medium blur, soft blur, just making it a bit more blurrier. Of course, once you've finished editing your video, you have these render regions here. You can simply just drag them out to match the start and the end of your videos. From there, you can head over to the export project tab. And this is where another plus is with VSDC. Firstly, they make it very, very simple how to export your video. Over to the left, you've got choose your media device. Now this is different types of export settings for these specific devices. For example, the most popular ones, PC, web, iPhone, Android, and DVD. For example, I'm gonna select iPhone. Now over here is gonna then export to an M4V. Now this is gonna be making it more compatible for iPhone. But just continuing on going over to the web, of course, you want to be for YouTube. So you would select for YouTube. And then once you select either one of them at the bottom here, it does tell you your input file. So it tells us what we imported. Then the output file, of course, it should match up or maybe you are uh, downscaling it. I would never agree for you to upscale because there's no point. But if you're downscaling, by all means, you can. So after this, you choose where you actually want it to be saved to and also the name of it. So you simply select change name. And from here, this is where you would pick where you want to save it, what you want to call it. I'm just going to save it as an example in that same folder. And once you're ready to go, all you need to do is simply select export project. Now what this is saying, the pro version is apparently faster in terms of exporting, which could possibly be true. However, we can just simply select continue and the export will begin 100% for free. At the top here, it tells us how long's left. So it's very good in that way. If you're going to be exporting something overnight, for example, a very long video, you can tick this box here, which shuts down the PC as soon as the exporting is done, which is very cool. Now, if you, for example, you have a situation, you just want to pause the con conversion here or the export. It's that simple. You simply pause it that quick. And if you want to stop it, simply select stop. As you can see, there's no delay. It's very quick and I'm actually very surprised with how good this software actually is as well. And you can see on the tool section here, you got different types of things you can use. For example, the voice recorder, which I haven't mentioned, and also the video stabilization. Now, if you want more tutorials on VSDC, it's very good software. It has a lot of potential and again, it is free. So I do recommend you guys trying it out as well. A link to it will be in the description. Thank you.